This is an awesome model. It's the 132 scale Dauntless by Hobby Master, and it's also die cast, super high quality. It's supposed to be the Battle of Midway. And I do actually have two other models of the Dauntless. It's actually my favorite World War II plane. Uh, I have a 118 scale, and then I also have a 132 scale that's a plastic version by Elite Force. I'll be doing another video probably comparing all of those to this one right here, because this is the only one in die cast that I could find online. And I want to thank Historic Aviation for sending me this model to review for y'all. I already buy a lot of my models from them anyway, so super stoked that they sent this to me to review. I'll put a link below in the video description if you want to buy one of these from them as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. First, I'll show you the model number. It's HA0212, and it's the Battle of Midway. And of course, I put the link in the video description below if you wanna purchase it. But you just lift up this tab here, and then pull out the styrofoam. And the first thing you'll notice on top are the assembly instructions, which I'll show you all here in a little bit. I'm just gonna take the lid off. Okay, so <laughs> funny thing. This is actually tissue paper. When I got my first Hobby Master model, I was like, what is all this tissue paper doing in here? I thought it was maybe used, but no, it's not. Hobby Master puts tissue paper in almost all their models. And honestly, it does a really good job of protecting the models. I actually appreciate that they do that. And we'll go ahead and start off with the accessories pack first. All right, so it looks like we have a pilot, a gunner, two different types of guns. You have a double barrel and a single barrel, so you can set it up how you want. And then just some other accessories I'll show you when we assemble it. So there's one more accessory that came with this that I actually didn't even know about when I got the model until I saw the back of the box. But it looks like it's a clear cowl hood and there's details of this engine that you can see when you remove the cowl hood that came with it. And you can put this on so you can actually see the details of the engine instead of just having the standard paint. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the model now. I'll give you an overview before we install the accessories. First impressions, this is awesome. I mean, the Dauntless is my favorite World War II plane to begin with, but the fact that this is all die cast, and it's heavy, guys. I mean, I knew it'd be somewhat heavy, but this is actually a lot heavier than I thought. Let's give you a quick view of the underside here. And I'll go ahead and start with the wheels. That way it'll be easier to install the accessories, but looks like you just pull it out here like that. Same thing with the other side. Looks pretty good. And the wheels don't rotate. They're stationary, which is fine. I mean, I can't see why you want to rotate them anyways, but on the bottom here, the tail wheel is also already ready to go. It's locked in place. You can't move that. Here are the assembly instructions. Looks like we have some photos. They're black and white, but it does show you where all the pieces go. I'm going to go in order of the assembly instructions somewhat, and this is actually the fuselage antenna here. That's going to go in this section right here. It has a little hole, and you just got to line it up and we'll see if it fits pretty good. You probably have to use or want to use some glue, but no, that actually pushed in pretty good. Next up, we have the pitot tube, and it also came with two of these as well, which I like because these are small and they can break. So it goes right there into that slot, and we'll see if this one needs any glue. No, pushes in pretty good like the other one. I will probably put some glue on it just because, but looks good. Next up is the exhaust. And the reason these are removable is because you can take off this cowling hood like I showed y'all and put on the clear one. And we'll go ahead and do that first. To remove the propeller, you just wiggle it like this. And it has one bigger cylinder here and one smaller one there at the top. So you can't get them mistaken when you put it back on. And then you're supposed to just squeeze the cowling and move it like this side to side to be able to move it like that. And there we go. Really good engine detail there. So now I'll show you what it looks like if you wanted to install the clear cowling hood like this. You just push it on all the way and then you can take the propeller and push it down like this and you can see what that looks like. I think that's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know if I would ever do it personally or leave it like this, but I do think that's a pretty cool feature. All right, so now to install the exhaust, you have a little tab on the top here which lines up with that spot there so you know which side it goes on. So the exhaust was actually a little more difficult to get on than I thought. It's not flush, you can see a little gap there. Same thing with the other side. So I'll probably shave some of that plastic down on the inside and make the connection a little better. And here's the front antenna here. Has a little tab right there, which is gonna go into this slot right here. Actually goes in pretty easy. And in the real Dauntless, you'd actually have a wire going from here to here, and then also connecting from here to here. It also came with two of these as well. 
All right, so now we're gonna get to the good part. Here are the different options of the guns you can install. I believe they're both 50 caliber. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but from all the research I found, they had 50 caliber in the back, and then they'd have 30 caliber in the front here, these two right here. And so with these options you have, it depends on the version of Dauntless, but for the Battle of Midway, we have the double barrel here. So we're gonna go ahead and install that now. To install the gun, we're actually gonna remove the gunner's canopy here. You're just gonna squeeze the back like that, and it has these little tabs that just holds it on. And then we're gonna push this one forward here. And then you'll see right there, there's a hole. And then this little post just slides into that hole. And it does go all the way down if you wanna put the guns in the down position or the close with the door here. But we're gonna leave them up for now. And so you can just wiggle it back up. And then the guns actually do rotate up and down as well. And then of course you can also turn them side to side. And if you wanna install the door that comes with it here, you'll see there's like a beveled edge in the front and then this flat on the back. This is actually gonna to go towards the actual gunner. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're just gonna push the gun all the way down like that. That way it's out of the way of the door. And then you'll just push the door on. And it does take a little bit of force to get this back part down. Like that. And that looks pretty good. I'll even show you all what it looks like with the canopy on. And there we go. For my model, I like the way it looks with the guns out, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. I also wanted to point out that the rear canopy actually can fit up here like in the real Dauntless. You would just have to take this piece off, which you just squeeze it, and then you can put it back on after, and then slide it forward like that. All right, and last for the assembly, we have the pilot and the gunner here, and you can tell this is the gunner because of the way his hands are. And they look okay. Uh, typical Hobby Master eyeless models. I don't know why they do that. I wish they would at least put some sort of eye or eyelashes or something, but they look okay other than that. You got the parachutes on the back, and yeah, let's go ahead and put them in. Before I put the pilot in, I'll go ahead and show you the cockpit. So you can just slide this canopy back like that, or you can squeeze it and lift it up, and it'll come off either way. But the cockpit looks really good. I'm impressed with the cockpit. You can see the rudder pedals down there look metal. You've got the stick, you have the headrest there. Of course, you can see the details in the seat. And then you have the throttle on the left there. On the right, you've also got some more gauges and instruments. And then you can see the scope here on the front that they would use for dive bombing. Installing the pilot's pretty easy. Just make sure when you put him in, his legs don't hit the stick like that. And I do wish that Hobby Master would have created the pilot holding the throttle in the stick because it kind of looks odd with his hands just sitting on his lap but i guess if you wanted to show this before they were taking off it would look fine and i'm actually going to remove the guns before i install the gunner so again same concept just slide them in like this and he'll sit on the seat then we're going to put the gun back in and make it look like he's holding it that looks pretty good i like that and for those of you that want to see what it looks like with the other gun here it is. It does stick out quite a bit. You actually may need to remove this rear door here to be able to fit it with that box there, but there you go. And another thing you can do because the gunner's hands are rubber is you can actually stretch them out a little bit and put some glue to make it look like he's holding the gun a little better. So that's it as far as the assembly goes. It looks really good. I would say a 10 out of a 10 to be honest with you. There's some little things here and there that you gotta be careful for like the antenna and stuff are pretty fragile but I'll go ahead and show you around the aircraft. Right here, we have some writing on the side. Looks like it says enclosure release, fire extinguisher inside. And on the front, next to the cowling, it says oil pressure relief valve, and then oil drain right there. And then you could see the bombs. It had a 100 pound bomb on here, and then I'll flip it around to the big bomb, which is 1,000 pounds. You can see that right there. It also says Picatinny Arsenal, 10-30-1942. This bomb actually does release like this. So when they would dive bomb, it would come out with this arm so it wouldn't hit the propellers. So that's pretty cool that they put that feature in there so you can actually move it. It doesn't fit that good, honestly, like it keeps falling off. So I would recommend putting some ticky tack or maybe even a little bit of glue to hold that on unless you wanna show it in the dive bomb position. Next up, the pilot actually had a glass window between his feet so he could see the target better. And they did try to replicate that with some paint. And then under here, we have some more writing, which says fuel tank vent. This one, I can't really read, but 
It's a little small, but it does have some writing there. Let me know in the comments if you know what that means. So on the right wing here, you have a green light. And then move it over to the left wing. You can also see they put the landing light there and it looks like it has a little clear cover, which is pretty cool. And then you have a red light on the tip here. Moving on to the tail, you have the identification lights, the red, green, and yellow, and they are just painted on. And then you also have the arrestor hook here, and that does not actually lift up. So as far as moving parts go, the actual ailerons do rotate like this, and then the dive flaps actually work, which I thought was pretty cool. You wanna kinda of pull it out a little bit like this, and then you can separate them, the top and the bottom, like that. Of course, be careful because they are plastic hinges, but that looks good there. And then of course, the middle one, you'll just pull out like that. And then the right, you'll just again, pull out. So you can see me push and pull there. You wanna make sure you pull it out so you don't break them. That gives them room to open up. And then there you go. That's what it looks like in its dive bomb position. That looks pretty cool. So if you wanna display it like that, in fact, let's go ahead and put the wheels down real quick. See what it looks like. That looks really good. I wish you could hold the bomb like this. I mean, I know you can with some glue or some ticky tack or something, but really impressed with this, guys. I think this is a really good looking model. The rudder also moves pretty good. And the same thing with the stabilizers. And they have pretty good resistance, so you can actually leave them in a position. And most Hobby Master models come with stands, but as you can see on the back of the box, the metal stand is sold separately for this Dauntless. Not really sure why, especially because of the price point, but I did go ahead and purchase one so I can review it for y'all. Okay, so it came in this unmarked box. I'm not really sure why, but I got it from eBay from a pretty reputable seller, so I just assumed that Hobby Master didn't put any uh, decals or stickers or artwork on their box, but it just comes with, looks like, four pieces here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. This is what it looks like under the bubble wrap. It does look like a legit stand. This part's plastic for whatever reason. And then the neck is metal, seems pretty beefy, as well as the cradle that holds it onto the airplane. And then we have some screws here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these out and assemble it. And for those of you that are wondering, this cost me about $39 on eBay with free shipping. It's a pretty hefty price tag, but honestly, this is a pretty solid piece as well. So I know you need something pretty beefy to hold up this Dauntless with the weight. So you can tell here on the bottom, it has a cutout right here, and then it has a little tab right there. You see two holes here and also two holes at the bottom. And you're just gonna line it up and set it in place like that. And then on the bottom, you're gonna need to screw two screws into those holes right there. And to install the cradle, you'll see on the bottom, it has a cutout here of the rectangle. You see that little section there is gonna line up with this cutout here as well. So it can only go on one way, like that. And then you're gonna take another screw and put it on the top. So I just realized this and didn't even know this is what you're supposed to do, but on the bottom of the cradle here, you'll see a little hole. And that's because you're supposed to screw the base onto the Dauntless to secure it, I guess. But you have this little rubber cover here that you'll remove and it comes off pretty easy. And that's where the screw will go. And you also have these two covers here. Same thing, you'll just take these off. They actually come out pretty easy too. And then what you'll do is you'll flip the actual base around. Oh, you know what? You're gonna wanna remove this antenna too because it doesn't look like it's gonna fit. Yeah, you need to remove that too because it'll come in contact with this base. You may get away with it if you maneuver it a little bit, which I'll probably do, like bend it just a little bit, but that's how it's gonna look. And if you wanna adjust the angle of the stand, they included an Allen wrench, and then you're gonna loosen up the screw, and it's got little teeth, so like they lock in place at certain positions. It doesn't just move freely. I don't know if you can hear that there. But that's pretty nice, so that way if you wanna install it like this, you don't have to worry about it falling backwards or loosening up once you tighten it down. It'll be pretty secure. And I'll show you what I'm talking about with this base interfering with the antenna. When you put the base in the slots like this and you go to push it down where it's gonna be screwed in, you can see how it actually hits the antenna. So I would recommend removing that if you're gonna install the base. So it was a little hard to get the screw in all the way and still it feels a little bit loose, but I don't feel like it's gonna fall off. I really like that with this base, you can actually install it in the dive bombing position. So I'll probably get that set up and show you what that looks like. 
All right, so here it is. Definitely my favorite Hobby Master model right now, and I do recommend getting the stand if you get this. I know it's a little pricey, but the fact that you can display it like this in the dive bomb position is pretty cool. And there you have it, the 132 scale Dauntless by Hobby Master and Diecast. I definitely recommend this model. Use the video link below in the description to purchase from Historic Aviation. I definitely recommend them as well. So thanks for watching. If you wouldn't mind, please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot of other cool videos and I have more coming soon. So thanks for watching.